For centuries, scientists have puzzled over one of history's greatest mysteries. Where did the first Americans come from, and how did they get here? For years, the leading theory suggested that ancient Siberians crossed the Bering Land Bridge around 13,000 years ago, carrying with them the tools and traditions of the Clovis culture. But recent discoveries, ancient footprints, tools, and now DNA, have suggested a far more complex scenario. A new DNA study published in Cell Reports adds a stunning twist. Some of the earliest Americans came not just from Siberia, but also from Asia. To uncover this story, researchers turned to a remarkable tool, mitochondrial DNA, or mtDNA for short. Picture your DNA as a massive library of instructions that makes you who you are. Most of it is stored in the nucleus of your cells, but a tiny portion lives in mitochondria, small, energy-producing factories inside every cell. Mitochondrial DNA is special because it's passed down only from mothers to their children, like a family heirloom handed from one generation to the next. Over time, small changes or mutations in this DNA act like a clock, marking when and where our ancestors lived. By studying these mutations, scientists can trace the paths of ancient peoples, like following a trail of footsteps across millennia. The study focused on a rare type of mitochondrial DNA called haplogroup D4H, common today in Asia and present in ancient samples from northern China. A haplogroup is like a family tree for your DNA, grouping people who share a common ancestor based on specific mutations. D4H is rare, found in only about 1 in 200 people worldwide today. But this D4H haplogroup has several branches. One branch, called D4H3A, is found in indigenous Americans, while its sister branch, D4H3B, has also been spotted in modern populations in China and Thailand. This connection hinted at a shared ancestry, a link between Asia and the Americas forged during the Ice Age. To trace the origins of D4H, the researchers embarked on a massive genetic study. They analyzed over 100,000 modern DNA samples from across Eurasia and the Americas. They also analyzed over 15,000 ancient DNA samples from sites across the globe, and the results were groundbreaking. The rare D4H haplogroup, the researchers found, likely originated in northern coastal China, a region that includes modern provinces like Shanghai and Liaoning and others, as well as nearby areas like Beijing and Heilongjiang. Let's break down the family tree of D4H. The researchers constructed a detailed phylogeny, a map of how D4H and its sub-branches evolved over time. At the root is D4H, the common ancestor, which split into several sub-haplogroups like D4H1, common in North and Central China with some presence in Japan, D4H2, found in Japan, Siberia, and the Ainu population, D4H3, primarily in North and Central China with branches in the Americas, and D4H4, mainly in Northwest and Southwest China. Within D4H3, two key branches emerged, D4H3A, which became a founder lineage in the Americas, and D4H3B, found mainly in China. One ancient sample, dubbed NE5 from the Amur River Valley, dated to about 14,000 years ago, belonged to D4H3A and was just six mutations away from the Native American D4H3A lineage, making it the closest known Asian relative. The study revealed two major bursts of migration, or radiation events, when D4H lineages spread from northern coastal China. The first happened during the last glacial maximum, between 26,000 and 19,000 years ago, when the Earth was at its coldest. This harsh climate pushed these early explorers to seek new lands, where resources might be more plentiful. The study estimates that around 22,000 years ago, a group carrying the D4H3A lineage, the Native American branch, began their journey. These dates come from a sophisticated method called tip dating, which uses the ages of ancient DNA samples, calibrated with radiocarbon dating, to estimate when lineages split. But here's the catch. During this time, the Bering Land Bridge, which connected Asia to North America, was often blocked by huge ice sheets. So how did these people reach the Americas? The answer lies in the coastal route hypothesis. Scientists now think these early migrants may have traveled by simple boats or rafts along the Pacific coast, following a pathway known as the Kelp Highway. This wasn't a road, but a rich ocean ecosystem stretching from Asia to North America, filled with kelp forests, fish, and sea mammals. This wasn't one big migration, but a series of trips, with small groups braving dangerous waters and icy shores to reach a new world. The second radiation event occurred during the last deglaciation, between 19,000 and 11,500 years ago, as the ice sheets melted and the climate warmed. This period saw the rise of sub-haplogroups like D4H4, D4H1C, 
common in southwest China, and D4H1A, prevalent in Japan, with ages ranging from 18,000 to 12,000 years ago. The warmer weather led to a population boom, increasing competition for limited resources like food and shelter. During this time, some D4H lineages spread to Japan, contributing to the gene pool of the indigenous Ainu and ancient Jomon people. Land bridges still connected China to Japan before rising seas submerged them around 12,000 years ago, likely facilitating this migration. While mitochondrial DNA tells the story of mothers, the Y chromosome tracks the paternal line, passed from fathers to sons. The study found striking parallels with a Y chromosome haplogroup called C2AL1373, apparent to Native American lineages like CP39, common among indigenous Americans. By analyzing Y chromosome data from over 458,000 individuals, the researchers found that C2AL1373 was most common in northern coastal China. Two ancient samples from the Songnan Plain in China, dated to 14,000 years ago, carried both D4H3 mitochondrial DNA, found in China with branches in the Americas, and C2AL1373Y chromosomes, apparent to Native American lineages, suggesting that entire families, mothers and fathers, from this region contributed to the peopling of the Americas. This genetic story is mirrored in the archaeological record. Across northern China, Japan, and the Americas, Ice Age peoples crafted similar tools, particularly stem projectile points, arrowheads, and spear tips with a notched base. These tools, found at sites like Cooper's Ferry in Idaho 16,000 years ago, and Jomon sites in Japan 15,500 years ago, show closer ties to each other than to Siberian artifacts suggesting a shared cultural tradition. The Kelp Highway hypothesis, which suggests early migrants followed a coastal route rich in marine resources, also supports this idea. Today, the descendants of these ancient travelers carry the D4H3A lineage in indigenous communities across the Americas, from the Inuit in the Arctic to the Mapuche in Chile. In Japan, the Ainu preserve traces of D4H1A and D4H2, linking them to the same northern Chinese ancestors. The discovery of D4H's journey from northern coastal China to the Americas and Japan reveals a hidden chapter in the peopling of the Americas. It shows that China was a major source of some of the earliest Americans, supports the idea that Ice Age people could travel by boat along the Pacific coast, and even uncovers a surprising genetic link between Native Americans and the ancient Japanese. But it also shows how much we still don't know. As technology advances with better genetic extraction and testing, and as we uncover more DNA samples, and also more archaeological evidence like tools, we inch closer to understanding the full story of human migration across the continents. Thanks for watching. If you found this story fascinating, you can like, subscribe, and share this video. Also, let us know in the comments what you think about this ancient connection between China, Japan, and the Americas. Until next time,